Um, my, my blood is boiling with Philadelphia. We'll replay the clip that got everybody in Philadelphia up in the uproar. All the name calling from them. Uh, don't forget, know the show because it is the 95 70 game All Star Week blowout. We still have a pair of tickets to go see Jerry Seinfeld and Jim Gaffigan, plus a Gold Blooded Warriors t shirt. Uh, we still have a round of golf to give away at the Berkeley Country Club. Still got a couple private lessons. Uh, private lessons for jiu jitsu or self defense lessons, courtesy of Evolve Trading Center. We got Muay Thai boxing lessons, courtesy of Evolve Trading Center. We got a couple two hundred fifty dollars gift cards, courtesy of Alexander Steakhouse and Buon Vino. Shout out to Judy and the rest of the crew up there, Buon Vino and Walton Creek. Plus, we got a pair of tickets to Hip Hop Made the Bay at SAP Center on November third. So, know the show coming up at nine twenty. And you'll qualify for one of these great, great prizes, the All-Star Week blowout here at 9570 Game. Nobody loves you like 9570 Game, as we say good morning to everybody out there. Getting off their graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? If you're getting ready for work, what is happening? Hopefully you enjoyed the Major League Baseball All-Star Game where Camilo Duvall gets the win. Diaz from Colorado gets the MVP award, the Ted Williams MVP award, hitting that home run there late in the game. And the National League win for the first time since 2012? Wow, 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 wow. National League finally getting off the snide during the All-Star game. So it was a lot of fun. I had fun watching the All-Star game yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I just, I love seeing Camilo Duvall and Alex Cobb both go out there and, and look good. I mean, for a Giants fan, isn't that what you want? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than, oh, you know, Atley Hammaker. Oh, oh, Sean Estes. Sean Estes. Somebody else got rocked. Ro Rick Russell, I believe, was the one who gave up the home run to Bo, Bo Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Gave back to back We've home got runs. a lot of bad all star yeah. pitching moments. Yeah. yeah. Although I think Vogelsong pitched well, if I remember. Yeah. Well, a guy who was up there was Dave Fleming on the international feed. Call it the All-Star Game up in Seattle. And Seattle popped at T-Mobile Park. Home run derby was a lot of fun. The game played out well. You had some great chance with Shohei Otani come to Seattle. Still the team. Courtesy, you know, trying to defend the A's fans here and their franchise in Oakland. But let's talk to Flynn. As Camilo Duvall gets to win, Alex Cobb made some rounds as well. Flynn back on the roast as he is every single week enjoying the great city of Seattle. Good morning, Flynn. How you doing, man? Good morning. I'm good. It is. It's, uh, it's been fun to be up here. How was the game itself, man? I know you called it for the international feed there up in Se Seattle at T-Mobile Park with that big old ballpark next to Lumen Field. But I thought the game popped. I thought the uniforms, a lot of people made big deal about the uniforms. I thought the uniforms were fine. They weren't great, but they weren't bad. Overall, your experience at the All-Star game, t tell us about it, Flynn. Well, it is a great venue. You know, summertime up here is just so nice. So you get the visuals of the park and the water and the mountains. So it's just kind of like cool to be there. And and uh, even if you're not here, watch it on TV and just see. I, to me, it's one of the great venues in the game. I mean, I really think this ballpark has held up so well over the years. So that was one thing, just sitting inside there with the sun shining and all the games great players down on the field. That that was cool. I mean, I, we missed, you know, no Judge, no Trout, no Jordan Alvarez. The American yeah. League team was a little thinner than usual on star power just because there's some some of the biggest stars in the game weren't available and healthy. Ellie De La Cruz, who's uh, taken the game by storm over the last month, wasn't there. Uh, that, you know, felt like a little bit of a void. But the game itself was a really good game, and I heard you guys just talking about uh, the Giants who pitched. It was fun to see both Cobb and Camilo Duvall come in and do a great job. Cobb had a battle with Shohei, which was really cool, and Camilo struck out Julio Rodriguez. I thought that was one of the, the great moments of the yeah. game, the battle between those two, so I, I enjoyed it. Cobb actually made some comments regarding Shohei Otani, which I found to be like really you know exciting to hear from a player on the team. I mean, you're around this team. Uh, is that even a, a reality? I mean, Flem, are we just are we just talking nonsense? Even wishing, dreaming, thinking about a trade deadline to try to bring in someone like Shohei Otani? Well, um, trade deadline. I, I I guess I shouldn't say that it's impossible, but I, I really feel like that is unlikely. I mean, number one, I just don't see the Angels. If they're if they lose every game from now until the trade deadline, yeah, then they probably entertain it. But assuming that doesn't happen, I just don't see them trading him away. And totally I, fair. I, and I, the the owner, you could argue with that logic. Like you could say that in theory it sounds good. Hey, if you're not going to resign him, and your odds of actually going to the playoffs are not that great. But I I, I sympathize with 
you've got that guy on your team. I, I just don't think I would want to be the guy who traded him away. Um, and I would still feel like, hey, we, we're going to make our best pitch, and if he chooses somebody else, he chooses somebody else. But I'm not going to take it for granted that he's leaving us. So that that's my first thought is that it's going to be really hard to trade for him. And I think the hall would have to be so high that even – though he is the greatest player in the game right now and the most unique player of all time, I, I, I would pause before I gave up my whole farm system for two months of a guy when I don't believe that's going to give you much of an advantage in signing him in the yard. I mean, I, I think he's going to do a, two, a true free agency tour and, and consider all his options no matter where he gets traded if that were to happen. So that's my long-winded answer. Now... Otani as a free agent, a whole different thing. Right. And it's going to captivate the sports world. It's going to be the biggest story in baseball like Judge was, but times two probably. Uh, and the Giants are going to be in the mix for that. Now, does that mean they're going to sign him? It does not mean that, but they're going to be in the mix for Shohei. You know, Flynn, do you believe that Shohei is going to be the first Major League Baseball player to get $100 million per season? Or what's that contract going to look like for him once he does touch down a free a agency? Question. Yeah, that is a great question. I don't think it's going to be that high. I just, the parameters of the, uh, but well, I mean, I say that and it doesn't sound impossible to me. Right. Because um, last year, I, real quick, Flynn, last year I floated out $75 million per season. Some people are like, you're crazy, Bonte, but I'm thinking you're getting the top five pitcher. You're getting the top five hitter. He is box office. He's going to put butts in the seats. He's going to sell a lot of jerseys. He's probably the most marketable, marketable player you have in all of Major League Baseball. I thought 75 right now would probably be a bargain for Shohei Otani <laughs> per year. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I do think that he pays for a lot of his contract himself with all the extra stuff. I, I do believe that, and I think he's probably the only guy – Judge is close. I mean, mm -hmm. Judge, I think Judge pays for a lot of what you pay him just in peripheral benefits. But I, I, I mean, my guess would be, my guess had been coming into this year, Shohei, like 60, 65 a year for a long term deal. Um, it is probably higher than that now. It probably is. And maybe, you know, there, there is a chance you could do like a shorter term deal with him. You, you, it would have to be really short term because I think Shohei's going to be twenty nine. I think mm -hmm. uh, so. You could you could at least pitch the idea to him of, hey, come to us. We're going to give you this opt out after two years, so that if this isn't what you think it is, you don't have to commit to us for the rest of your whole career, and we're going to just pay you an insane amount of money. Say it's two years, two hundred million. And uh, and it's like a little trial period. See if you like being a giant or whoever. I mean, I I think if you 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 wouldn't be able to get him to do that on like a four year deal because then his opt out would come at age thirty three or thirty four or something. The agent I'm sure is saying nah that then we can't. But if you gave him a two year deal, maybe you could get him to to at least consider it where he could still be a free agent at a relatively young age, but my guess is probably all that's out the window and it's going to be a 10-year deal for 700 million bucks. Wow. Like that. Well, look, looking at the team that they've put on the field this year and how they've performed, how would you assess the infrastructure and, and the squad that they've built? I know there's not a lot of carryover because there are some guys that are going to be free agents moving on or could be potentially free agents moving on, but like Patrick Bailey looks really nice. I know Schmidt has struggled a lot, but God, that glove is just incredible. I mean, he makes some plays at shortstop the other day were just unbelievable. Matos is coming along, you know, like there are some encouraging signs. How does that infrastructure look to someone like him on the outside? Yeah, I think it would look pretty good. I think it's a good year for the Giants to put their best foot forward, uh, you know, to be in the mix for him. Now, uh, again, it, are the chances, everybody's got a pretty small chance of signing him because the competition's going to be intense. But I do think the pitch would be a pretty strong one right now. The health of the organization, the uh, the young players. I mean, the catcher, to me, that that is a pretty good piece. Uh, the catcher, y you can throw some numbers up there to show, hey, like, look how this guy's helping the rest of our pitchers. Uh, he's going to help you when you're out there. I, I was told that, I, that one, of the main, um, one of the main criteria for him is going to be a six-man rotation. 
that huh. he wants. He wants a team willing to uh, do it a little differently, like they do it in Japan. Uh, he feels like I, I've heard that he feels like that's the best way for him to manage the workload of doing both, um, you know, for the long haul. And there's no team <laughs> that would be better equipped to consider something like that than the Giants. And the Giants this year have demonstrated to him and to everybody in baseball that they can get creative with a pitching staff and they can, they can manage around an unusual circumstance. So I think from that standpoint, the Giants would be extraordinarily well positioned and they have a lot of arms in the system to where I think they'd feel like, Hey, we can do that. You know, Alex Cobb will be back next year. You got Logan Webb locked in. You got all these other young guys. Um, uh, I think they would feel like they were in a pretty good position to do something like that. Talking to Dave Fleming here on the morning roast on 95 7 game. Le Flem, when we know you're on a little vacation, get a little two day break before this big road trip. I'm looking at the month of August because Shasky hates when I do this, but I look ahead. Binocular and Bonte. In, binocular Bonte is what they call me. And I'm looking at August saying, boy, you got to go down <laughs> to Anaheim. You got to play the Texas Rangers and the Tampa Bay Rays. You got to play the Braves six times. Got to go to Philadelphia. You got to play Cincinnati again. You got to play. The, so basically, well, I'm saying all that to say. Is this probably imperative for them to get off to a great start here on this 10-game road trip coming? A 11-game road trip, I should say. Three in Pittsburgh, four in Cincinnati, three in Washington, and, of course, that one in Detroit. How big is this road trip coming up for you for when it comes to the San Francisco Giants? Get it out of the second half on a hot start. You're looking ahead to August. I'm looking ahead to what I'm going to have for breakfast. Like, <laughs> that's a, that is a different uh, – uh, I, I look, now that you rattle it off, it is true – I I guess I would say that we this Giants team has been so unpredictable in terms of who they've played well against and who they haven't. Like it almost hasn't mattered who the Giants have yeah. played this year. When they're hot, they're hot. When they're not, they're struggling against anybody. But I I do think it's important. I think last year the first series, literally the first series after the All Star break last year, torpedoed their whole season, mm. and uh, they never recovered from it. And you know they finished strong, but by then it was too late. Uh, and so I do think it is a tone setter. It's a tone setter for the the rest of the season leading into the trade deadline, trying to give your front office an idea of what they might need to do. I mean, I think the Giants front office is feeling like there are some moves that could be made to help this team, particularly with Tyro's injury. So, yeah, it's big and it's tough. I mean, Pittsburgh has never been easy on the Giants. Four games against the Reds is a lot more difficult than it looked uh, mm -hmm. a month ago. And then, you know, then you're talking D.C. and Detroit at the end of a long trip. Now, you know, it's probably good timing for a trip like that in that everybody's coming in fresh. And so you should be set up to play your best baseball. But uh, we'll see how the, the pitching lines up. I mean, Logan Webb's coming off that great outing. Amazing. Uh, you, you know, you might you might work it. This is where, Bonte, you would fit in well with a front office because I guarantee you part of the all-star break planning for this team is they get the grease board out and they're plotting ahead like, okay, where do we slot Logan in and who's he going to face, not just the next couple turns, but they're probably looking that far ahead with uh, exactly how to manage him and his workload. He's been that important. Shasky, you ready for a divorce? <laughs> what? Hey, hey. So now you're doing a little coaching like you're me? I want that front office job. Yeah, I want seriously. that grease for it, Flip. I want circles. Uh, uh, We're guy. going to Atlanta. We're hey. going to Philadelphia. What? We got the Dodgers oh, for first week of Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. We're playing this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be on the infield. Yeah, well, what did you guys me? hire Bonte for? Oh, he's our VP of schedule look ahead. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I just want to be on the field with with uh, Crawford getting those ground oh. balls with those tiny little training gloves that he uses. Uh, <laughs> you Flem, I, I'm looking at that first half, right? And I look, I'm a realistic Giants fan, right? I understand you can't win it all every year, and there's levels to success, right? And where they're at in their life cycle, I thought it was an extremely successful first half for a variety of reasons, like Lamont Wade's and Conforto's and, and J.D. Davis's. These are just great years these guys are having and that have just been way above my predictions. And then I look at the rookie and seeing what they've done, some wildly successful, you know, stretches for these guys. Logan Webb shoving like a true ace that you paid him to be on a game like Sunday that you needed in a rubber match. A superstar closer coming into his own. There are so many successes on this team. 
But what for you will define success for the entire season? What do they need to do in this second half for it to be a truly successful season? Yeah, just from a bottom line results, because I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I, I, it's been a hugely positive year for this franchise. Uh, from a bottom line standpoint, making the playoffs will be now in this division. I, I usually would say win the year division because I think that's to me that is. I don't want to be like a Billy Bean. You know, the playoffs are just a total crapshoot because I, I don't a hundred percent agree with that. But I think the test in this sport is winning your division, especially when you're in a tough division like this. So ordinarily, my answer would say would be the real success would be if they can win the National League West. But I. Yeah, I'm willing to give them some leeway. They've been so beat up, and the Diamondbacks and Dodgers are both really good, and the Padres aren't going away. That just making the playoffs, I think, would be a nice accomplishment for this team. I think peripherally, like just as an aside for some more specifics, I think if you went into this offseason really, truly feeling like Patrick Bailey and Luis Matos up the middle positions where guys – you thought going forward we're going to be big parts of your team, that would be just an enormous win. It right. would be. Uh, it makes everything easier when you don't just find rookies, but find rookies who are going to be in your lineup for a long time. That's you know That was the secret sauce in the championship years. It wasn't just young players. It was young players then that the Giants could pencil in year after year. And even if it was only those two, I mean, I, I have high hopes for the, some of the others, and I mean, heck, Blake Sable right now has been about as impressive as anybody. Like, I, I am totally smitten with the improvements that Sable's made. But I just think catcher in center field, if you if you go to the playoffs and feel like those two guys, I think Camilo's established himself now, and Logan He's Webb a stud. Yeah. has. He's I, I'm, such I'm a not, stud. I'm not thinking that's even in the cards. Those guys oh. are locked in. But if Bailey and Matos were, were your guys going forward at those two positions, uh Gosh, that's, uh, that would be really, really exciting. No, that would be. That would be. Second half starts on Friday in Pittsburgh against the Pirates. Ten, that exciting team in Cincinnati, a four-game set starting on Monday. I won't look ahead to August this yet, Flip. I'll, I'll taper and, down a little bit. And, and Dave, before you go, do you follow Gabe Kapler's Instagram with <laughs> him trying burgers and doing like montages over videos as he's sipping smoky whiskeys? I don't. Should I be? It's pretty interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> and his music selection, too. He's got an eclectic music taste, man. He's all over the place. Hey, man, he brings the speaker on the bus. I'm, I ride behind him on the bus. Oh, and he got, you know, it, it, it's, it is, it's a little different than most uh, big league managers, I think, which I love. I mean, he's got his personality. He's not obsessive about it. He's a hard, hard, hard worker. But he and Bochi are so different, <laughs> so different. But I, but one thing that I think they do share in common is the baseball doesn't a hundred percent define their lives, and I, to me, that's healthy. Like they're more fun to be around because you can talk to them about other stuff. Uh, so they're not as different as everybody. You know, everybody has always painted them as like total opposites. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I do think they they both have that quality of. They're kind of fun to talk to about other stuff, and that makes them interesting people. I uh, can't wait for the second half to start. The boombox guy with the Niners, and now you got Gabe Capper coming out of the bus with the loudspeaker. Good details right there. We got to talk to Cap about that in the near future. Flynn, man, have a great call this weekend in Pittsburgh at PNC Park, a park we want to get to, man. And glad you enjoyed the All Star festivities. See you, buddy. Festivities. I I did. It was it's a, it was fun to be up here, and I'll I'll look forward to talking to you again. I guess we'll do our next chat from. Good old Cincinnati, Let's huh? Go. Let's go. Let's go. Three. What, the, what were they? River. No, Synergy Field. Is that what they call That's it? Great American. Great American Ballpark. Great American, great ballpark. American uh, yeah. Small Park is yeah, all they call it. There you go. Great uh, American Small Park. The, uh, the uh, Patrick Bailey versus Ellie De La Cruz. Let's go. That's going to be mm. something else. Mm. Really that could be fun. That will be a Let's lot go. of fun. That would be a lot of fun. All right, Flynn. We'll talk to you See next you, buddy. week. See you, buddy. All right, bye. Dave Flippy here on the roast, and you know you can't tell me nothing. Right, all Cincinnati. So it's loving in my ear. It goes, How's Farhan's old baby? You imagine doing a, a show with Farhan and Shasky. You'd be ready to rip his head off. Probably. You want to kill him. Probably. Now I'm in